generals, admirals, ladies, and gentlemen. Dear guests, I am Henry. Bonsoir, Monsieur le Président, Président du Comité Militaire, Général, Amiral, Mesdames et Messieurs, Chers Invités, Je suis Henri. And I am Marietta. We are the representatives from the youth organizations of the Estonian Defense League. Et je suis Mariette. Nous sommes les représentants des organisations de jeunesse de la Ligue de Défense Estonienne. And today, we are the hosts of the opening ceremony of the NATO Military Committee Conference 2022 in Tallinn. Et aujourd'hui, nous sommes les hôtes de la cérémonie d'ouverture de la conférence du Comité Militaire de l'OTAN 2022 à Tallinn. We start the official part of the evening with the anthems of NATO and the Republic of Estonia. Nous commençons le parti officiel de la Soria avec les yeux de l'OTAN et la République d'Estonie. on stage the President of the Republic of Estonia, Mr. Alar Garis, for the welcome speech. Please, Mr. President. Nous sommes honorés d'inviter sur scène le Président de la République d'Estonie, Mr. Alar Garis, pour le discours de bienvenue. S'il vous plaît, Mr. le Président. Chair, Chief of Defense, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I am honored to welcome you in Estonia, in Italy, for deliberations which will shape NATO and our collective defense for years, if not decades to come. There is a solid basis for this work from the Madrid summit. Now all of us, and you, NATO's most brilliant military leaders in particular, are faced with a hard job of translating these guidelines into something tangible. Something that will ensure the security of Euro-Atlantic area at a critical moment in our history. That will determine if a space 
remains whole and free. This is the existential question for Estonia. But right now, an existential battle is being fought in Ukraine. I am sure we have all felt relief because of Ukrainian gains on the battlefield in recent weeks. Not just relief and hope for Ukraine, but for the future of Europe. And we may even feel a certain pride. Many of us have contributed to the success through supporting the training of the Ukrainian armed forces and providing military equipment, armaments, sharing intelligence. If anyone still needed proof that Ukraine is worthy of those efforts, then I think we now have plenty. Right now is the time to ensure that Ukraine can continue to build on those initial successes on the battlefield. We all know that the war is far from over. This means keeping our military support going, whatever it takes. Failing to capitalize on Ukrainian gains would be a major error. A frozen conflict in Ukraine would be a festering wound at the heart of Europe. I would, it would keep us in a cycle of confrontation with Russia for years to come. I also want to address the question of eventual Ukrainian victory, a defeat for Russia. I know that there are some concerns as to what it would mean for European security. There may even be a worry that a military defeat in Ukraine would lead to disintegration of the current power vertical in Russia, a disintegration of Russia itself, perhaps. My first recommendation is to not build a policy towards Russia that is based on fear of instability. We have been there before. In the late 1980s and 90s, the importance attached to the stability of the Soviet and later Russian leadership caused Western leaders to turn a blind eye to the political trajectory Russia was taking. Both Gorbachev and Yeltsin played on the fear that their losing power would bring unpalatable figures to the helm of Russia. Sadly, this happened anyway. Looking back, it was a mistake to not squarely acknowledge nor address early signs that Russia had not led to go of its imperialist aims and that it was willing to compromise on crucial democratic principles. Not to mention disregard human rights. The West was offered the same social contract as the Russian population, stability and economic prosperity in return for accepting backsliding in diplomacy and aggressive international conduct. Let us not fall into that trap again. Instability in Russia may be a risk. However, current form of stability where Russia feels able to invade its neighbors and to undermine our Western democracies through corruption, energy blackmail, information war and influence operations cannot be the status quo we wish to maintain. From the perspective of European security and stability, the most effective strategy towards Russia continues to be containment, economically, politically and militarily. In the military domain, this means NATO's truly credible deterrence and defense capability in the form of forward defense to counter potential 
Russian aggression. We may be certain that whichever internal poly political struggles may be unleashed by the coming defeat in Ukraine, the ideology of Putinism that dictates re-establishing control over Russia's sphere of influence, the fragmentation of Europe, and the destruction of the transatlantic bond will not disappear. And so, our resistance to such efforts must remain unbreakable. This is what our policy should take as an objective. We are not responsible for helping Putin and the rest of Russian leadership save face. They are and should be treated as fully responsible for the crimes committed and mistakes that were made in attacking Ukraine and in broader consequences for Russia. But let's now return to a work that lies ahead in the coming days. How do we best defend ourselves across the NATO territory? Russia may be losing, but it would be a mistake to underestimate the danger to NATO, which still remains acute. And we cannot forget the growing threat of jihadist terrorism in the key regions of the world that are critical importance to NATO. Estonia is a nation that has always believed in the importance of autonomy and self-sufficiency. Therefore, when faced with a severe threat, we focus on raising our ability to help ourselves. So while NATO and the transatlantic bond rem remain the bedrock of Estonian security, Estonia fully intends to be prepared to f defend itself. In the six months of this year alone, the Estonian government has allocated an additional billion euros for defending, defense spending. We are already working on developing new capabilities, enhancing our ammunition stockpiles and making our reserve army system more agile. We are committed to building a division in Estonia with the support of our allies and to enhance accommodation and training facilities to NATO troops here. Polling data show that our nation's will to defend our country is higher than ever, and nearly 70% of Estonians are ready to directly participate in Estonians' defence. And I know that it is said often. However, it cannot be said often enough. Estonia is deeply grateful for the contributions NATO allies have made and keep on making to our defence. As all of you know, our discussions in NATO can be heated and we don't always agree. However, I know, and all Estonians know, that we can rely on our allies and we will never forget this. So let me, on behalf of Estonian people, Thank all of you and your troops who have been working here with us. I wish you fruitful discussions in the coming days and hope you enjoy your time in Estonia. I was looking forward to welcoming all of you on Sunday in Kajiorg, but unfortunately urgent travel plans have interfered. Nevertheless, I do hope you enjoy reception. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, next, the chair of the NATO Military Committee, 
Admiral Rob Bauer will give a speech of welcome. Sir, the floor is yours. Mesdames et Messieurs. Ensuite, le président du comité militaire de l'OTAN, l'amiral Rob Bauer, prononcera un discours de bienvenue. Amiral, la parole est vous. Your Excellencies, Chiefs of Defense, Strategic Commanders, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Tere Utest, Good evening. Mr. President and General Hirem, on behalf of all the Chiefs of Defense present today, let me start by extending our gratitude for hosting this NATO Military Committee Conference in Tallinn. I'm not sure if we are NATO's most brilliant lead, military leaders, but I know we have good staffs. And unlike our Russian counterparts, we encourage them to tell us when we are making or about to make the wrong decisions. Thank you for receiving us in such splendid surroundings. Now, before I continue with the official part of, the, uh, of my speech, I want to recognize two people in the room specifically, because they represent hope and the future. And they are, and I hope I pronounce it correct, Marikta and Hari. You from the Defense League, please come on the stage if you want. It's amazing that the two of you in impeccable English and in impeccable French, especially for the French Chief of Defense, of course, <laughs> and the mill rep, uh, you have done a great job so far. So I thank you very much, and I hope you will join me in an applause for these two. There is still hope, that's good. I believe the location of this welcoming ceremony symbolizes Estonia's most important strength, and that is connection. As Tallinn has one of the biggest and busiest passenger ports in the Baltic Sea region, it connects people from north, east, south, and west. With beautiful 13th to 16th century architecture and forward-leaning innovative port facilities, it connects the old with the new. And because it is situated in one of the most advanced digital societies in the world, it, is also, it also connects offline and online systems. Estonia has a unique ability to embrace change, innovation and creativity. And it is a country that is firmly rooted in the democratic traditions that NATO holds dear. This inspires us all, especially in a time when security in the Euro-Atlantic area is under immense pressure. Mr. President, as you rightly put it earlier this year, and I quote you, there are those who have not given up the desire for the future of Europe to be shaped, not by the free self-determination of nations, but by the right of the one who is stronger. End of quote. It is true that Russia jeopardizes our democratic values, dishonors our common history, and purposefully tries to destroy the entire international rules-based order. But there are also nations, free and democratic, who would stand up at all cost to protect it. To protect the sovereign right for each person and each nation to choose their own destiny. Estonia is such a nation. The three lions on your coat of arms represent your courage to fight for freedom. Even when the enemies were bigger and stronger, you stood up. You found strength, resolve and determination in your unity. The Estonian people have fought and fallen in the name of peace and democracy refusing to remain silent, persevering through conflict 
and occupation. Today, you can fiercely proclaim that Estonia has been free and independent longer than it was occupied. Estonia has always found its way through difficult times, both as a state and as a people. You have always found a common path forward, a path that turns hopes and dreams of freedom into reality. And you found friends and allies who wanted to walk on that path with you. Eighteen years ago, Estonia, alongside Latvia, Lithuania, Slovakia and Slovenia, walked through our open door, becoming an inherent part of the strongest defensive alliance in the world. An alliance that for seven decades has been able to turn dreams and ideas into reality. To recognize the value of working together on matters of common interest by pledging to come to each other's aid in case of an attack. By pooling resources, knowledge and defense capabilities. By building our security together as free and independent nations. Today still, this pledge of collective defense, one for all, all for one, is at the core of NATO. Today our 13 nations, soon to be 32, are connected, proclaiming that what unites us is far bigger than what divides us, turning our diversity into our biggest strength and forming the biggest band of brothers and sisters in the world. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why this location is so fitting is because NATO allies are more connected than ever, more united than ever, more ready than ever to protect every inch of allied soil and every single one of our one billion allied citizens. As we stand shoulder to shoulder, let us pay tribute to freedom, to the courage of our Ukrainian friends, and to the values that connect us all. Thank you. Thank you very much for the kind words, Mr. President and Mr. Chair. Now, the Estonian military orchestra will play. We hear the march named Koduma, Homeland, which is composed by Raymond Kul. Merci beaucoup pour ces amables paroles, Monsieur le Président et Président du Comité Militaire. Maintenant, l'orchestre militaire estonien vous jouera la marche nommée Koduma, patrie, composée par Raymond Kul.